Hey everyone, welcome back to AI Dialogues with Mr. Mark's AI and Friends. Um, today's deep dive is going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, for sure. We are going to be talking about women in STEM. And this is something that I'm actually uh, particularly fascinated by. And I was very excited to see that Mr. Marks has a new Differential Dialogues blog post up on his website. Oh yeah, that's a good one. And it's written by Emily Graham. Of MightyMoms.net. Yeah, so those of you who follow the parenting sphere probably already know her work. Mm -hmm. But um, she had some really great insights about the current state of women in STEM. She really does. And um, some of the things that, that really jumped out at me, I'd love to kind of get your take on it too, but um, you know, she talks about this statistic that only 26% of STEM professionals are women. Yeah, I mean, that really hits you right between the eyes. When you when you see a statistic like that, you think, wow. And, you know, I think one of the things that Graham does so well in this blog post is she kind of connects the historical context yes. with the current reality. Absolutely. And that historical piece is so important because it really sets the stage for understanding why we're still seeing these disparities today. Right. So, so what do you mean by the historical context? Like, what are some of the key things that she brings up? Well, she talks about how for centuries, STEM fields were seen as exclusively masculine domains. It's like there was this unspoken rule that science and technology were for men and women should stick to more feminine pursuits. And I think what Graham's getting at is that a lot of it is nurture. It's these societal expectations and stereotypes that get passed down through generations and they end up shaping the way we see ourselves and the way we see the world. So even if we're not consciously trying to exclude women from STEM, these historical biases are still kind of lurking in the background. Absolutely. They're baked into the very fabric of these fields. And that's why we see things like implicit bias in hiring and promotion decisions or in the way research funding is allocated. It's almost like there's this invisible barrier that women have to overcome even before they even get started. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to be aware of these biases and to actively work to challenge them. Because if we don't, we're going to keep perpetuating these inequalities. And that's where mentorship comes in, right? Because yeah. Graham talks a lot about how important it is for women in STEM to have mentors. Absolutely. Having a mentor, someone who's been there and done that, can be a game changer for women in these fields. They can offer guidance, support, and encouragement, and they can help navigate those sometimes choppy waters. It's like having someone to show you the ropes and to remind you that you're not alone in this. Exactly. And I think for women in STEM who are often underrepresented, especially in leadership positions, having that mentor can be the difference between staying in the field and leaving. Yeah, because if you don't see anyone who looks like you or who's had similar experiences, it can be easy to feel like you don't belong. Right. It's like you're constantly questioning whether you're good enough or whether you're in the right place. And that's where having a mentor who can say, hey, I've been there, I understand what you're going through, and you can do this can be so powerful. And, and, and you know, Graham also talks about the importance of peer networks. Yes. Building those connections with other women in STEM is crucial. It's about creating a community of support, a place where you can share your experiences, your challenges, and your triumphs. It's like having a tribe of people who get it. You yeah, know? exactly. Because when you're facing those unique challenges that come with being a woman in STEM, having that network of peers who understand what you're going through can be invaluable. It's like having a built-in support system. Yeah. You know, right. people you can call on when you need advice, encouragement, or just a listening ear. Right. And I think that sense of belonging, of knowing that you're not alone in this journey, is so important for women in STEM. Mm -hmm. It helps build resilience. And it reminds you that you're part of something bigger than yourself. It's like a feeling of camaraderie you get when you're part of a team, you know? Exactly. And that's what we need to create for women in STEM. A sense of community, a sense of belonging, and a sense of purpose. Yeah, because when you have that, you can achieve anything. Absolutely. It's like, you know, those moments when you hit a wall, mm -hmm. you know, in your career or in your research or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and you just feel like you're banging your head against it. And you're like, I don't know what to do. You know, right. Having that network of people who you can go to and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Yeah. Can you help me think this through? Can you give me some advice? Yeah. And I think that's something Ram really emphasizes in her post is that yeah. women in STEM face unique pressures. Absolutely. And I think a big one is this whole work life balance thing. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's like there's this expectation that they have to be amazing scientists, engineers, mm -hmm. mathematicians, whatever. And Super moms, too. Yeah. You know, like oh, they, they have to do it all. Be the perfect mom and be the 
you know, lighting expert in their field. Right. And it's just not realistic. It's not sustainable. It's not. Yeah. And Graham talks about the importance of setting boundaries. Yes. And I think that's so important. I think that's a good life lesson in general. It is. You know, not just for women in STEM, but for everyone. Yeah. Like, you have to know when to say no. Mm -hmm. You have to know when to take a break. Yeah. You have to prioritize. Your own well-being. Your mental health. Yeah. Your physical health. Yeah. If you're burned out, you're not going to be able to do your yeah. best work. and you're not going to be able to be the best mom or the best partner exactly you know whatever it is in your life right you have to take care of yourself first and i think that's something that a lot of women in stem struggle with because they're so driven they're so passionate about their work yeah that they sometimes forget to take care of themselves they feel guilty about it almost you know yeah like they should be working all the time like they should be in the lab mm. or they should be writing that grant proposal yeah and it's like no you need to take a break you need to recharge you need to go for a walk you need to hang out with your kids you yeah, need to yeah. read a book yeah. you need to do something that's not work related exactly and i think graham's point is that setting boundaries is not selfish it's actually essential for your success. I agree. Both personally and professionally. Yeah, if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be able to show up fully for anything. Right. So yeah. so it's actually an act of self-care and it's an act of... Empowerment. It's about taking control of your life and your career. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's interesting because Graham's overall turn in this blog post is actually quite optimistic. It is. You know, she's not like doom and gloom about the state of women in STEM. No. She actually sees a path forward, a path toward a more balanced and inclusive landscape. Absolutely. And I think a lot of her optimism stems from the fact that there is a growing awareness of these issues. Yeah. You know, people are talking about it more. We're seeing more initiatives to support women in STEM. There's and, more data. Yeah, there's more data. You know, that we can point to. And I think Graham specifically highlights the importance of inclusive hiring practices. Right. This is where it starts. You it's, know, it's huge. we need to create a culture where everyone feels welcome and valued where it's not just about ticking boxes you know right it's not just about saying oh we need to hire more women because that's the right thing to do yeah it's about actually creating an environment where everyone can thrive it's about recognizing that diversity is a strength it is you know it's not just something that we should do because it's morally right it's yeah. something that we should do because it makes good business sense exactly because it leads to better innovation better problem solving better outcomes for everyone it's like if everyone in the room looks the same and thinks the same way, right. you're going to miss out on a whole range of perspectives and ideas. Absolutely. And I think that's what Graham is really advocating for, is this idea of creating a truly inclusive STEM ecosystem. Yes. Where everyone feels like they belong, like their voices are heard and their contributions are valued. And that makes me think about Graham's closing remarks in this post. You know, she really emphasizes the importance of creating a STEM environment where everyone feels seen and respected. Right, like a true sense of belonging. Yeah, where no matter your background, your gender, your ethnicity, wh whatever it is, you come to the table and your ideas are valued. And your perspective is sought after. Yes, exactly. Because that's how we get the best solution. So, so for someone listening right now who's maybe thinking, okay, this is all great, but what can I actually do? Right. Like what are some concrete steps that, that people can take to contribute to a more inclusive STEM environment? I think the first step is awareness. You know, educate yourself about the challenges that women face in STEM. It's about being willing to listen, to learn. To grow. And to step outside of our comfort zone. Exactly. You can start by looking at our own behaviors, our own biases, and our own spheres of influence. And making those small changes. So this has been such an insightful deep dive. It's inspiring, isn't it? It is. It's inspiring and it's energizing. Yeah. And I hope our listeners are feeling that too. I hope so. So if you want to learn more about this topic, we highly recommend checking out Emily Graham's full blog post on Mr. Marx's website. Yes, definitely. She goes into even more detail about the challenges and opportunities facing women in STEM. And it's a must read for anyone who's passionate about this issue. And don't forget to visit MightyMoms.net, where Emily shares a wealth of resources and support for moms navigating all aspects of life, including careers in STEM. Great point. So thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time. Bye, everyone.